there are so many reasons besides uh, putting in a lot of information about the theatre, a lot of information about the Bolabai Institute, quite a few were connected with Girish Karnad. So therefore, I will start with Girish Karnad. Also, there was a, a sentimental reason Girish Karnad has just got his doctorate and though we meet very rarely, as and when we meet, and if ever he gets a chance of listening to this, he is bound to contradict a lot of memories of mine. It will be a very fruitful and enjoyable discussion with Girish, trying to sort of uh, check out each other's memories. It will also have a lot of sentimental value because we are bound to disagree on a lot of things. Now let me start with what I think might be my first memory of Girish Karnad. I remember him coming to the Bhulabhai Institute in a standard car, standard, the old standard and car stopping and then we met. That was the time when I learned or whether he told me that I don't remember that he had been given the Homi Bhava Fellowship for two years and therefore since we had already met I could tell him that I am doing three one act plays at the Bhulabhai Institute on the terrace and which Girish as usual promised to come which he did. The three plays which I did then were like this. One was written by Sagar Sarhadi and produced and directed by and acted also by V.K. Sharma. It was called Khayal Ki Dastak. The other two plays which were done, one was a play which I had directed earlier in 1956 uh, was Shadi Ka Prastav that is the proposal by Chekhov and the second play was the play which I had written in 1958 during one of the sessions of shooting or the sessions with Vijay Anand and somewhere subconsciously I was trying to compete with him. So I did write a one act play called Thodi Der Pehle, Thodi Der Baad. It is obvious that I had read Time and the Conways by J.B. Priestley and the play was influenced by that. Anyway, these were the three one act plays which were done and I remember Girish coming to the play and sort of uh, congratulating Sagar Sarathi V.K. Sharma and then he came, uh, he saw my two one-act plays and I remember telling me, him telling me, I didn't know that I was meeting a famous director but also a potential playwright. That was what we remember and then at some stage we must have gone down and talked. Now the talk I he, I remember at a later stage or at this stage, he telling me that he had written a play based on Yayati and his inspiration was Bharat Kapalachari's stories of Mahabharat. And he said he inspired by that. That much I remember. But later on, if I jump time, I also remember him telling me that he saw Alkazi's production of Strindberg's, I'm forgetting the name of the title, but he was very impressed by that. It was done at Bharti Vidya Bhavan, that I know because for that matter, and he saw it with a friend of his called Ashok Kulkarni, and it was the first sort of a well-produced play which he had seen. Miss Julie is the name of the play written by Strindberg. Now, 
I come back to the thing as we were talking, and Girish told me about the play in, uh, which he had written in Kannad. And as usual, I at that time going through my anti English phase. I said, Baba, but the point is, I am not doing plays in English. Why, why don't you people write in Hindi or do some other thing? Now, this is what Girish's speciality. He promised to send me a translation by Mr. Hundekar. And Hundekar gave me, sent me a rough translation. Now, I read the translation, but this is what I want to compliment Girish on this. He, he remembers his old friends and Hundekar's translation he sent to me. Again, it was the only copy it could have got lost. Anyway, I sort of went through the translation and then thinking that it would be better, I sent it to Delhi to Mr. Nemi Chan Jain, who read over it and, and sent me word that it was not a good translation. But one of the characteristics of all writers and critics is not to lose manuscripts. So, uh, Mr. Mimi Jain Jain did not lose the manuscript and he posted it back to me or to Dr. Dharambir Bharti, whoever it was. And I remember taking the script to Dharambir Bharti and talking excitedly about Girish Karnad and Dharambir Bharti uh, sort of uh, registering the theme that it was on Gayati. Now, he was anxious and he went through some of the pages of this play which Girish had written and he went to his library and brought out what was this famous uh, book written by, again, I'm forgetting the name, but it's uh, Charitra Kosh, I remember the title of the book. And he went through it and read the thing about Yayati and then went through the script which Girish had sent me. And he said, yes, it's, it's fine, but I don't have the time to translate it. But anyway, my play is going to be different. So this is the episode. Now, it so happened that I kept on reading the what now I can say not very good translation by Mr. Hundekar, but since I had the permission of the author and Mr. Hundekar didn't object obviously, I retranslated. Based on Mr. Hundekar's translation, I redid Yayati and fortunately I never lost the script. Now this is the story and later on Yati was performed but it was always read out by me as translated by myself but it is the credit must go to Mr. Hundekar and to Girish for sending me the script. Now in between I was very busy sort of a sitting and sleeping on the lovely sofas for which at one session I got a tremendous firing by Shinoi, but that incident I tell later. And all the time I was so obsessed with Kamu and Sarth and I had already translated a play by Kamu, which Shinoi had corrected some of the imagery, which was unchristian. He says, no, this has to be this. Now, fortunately, Shinoi had seen my two one-act plays which I had done in Xavier's college. That is the proposal. What I did when Girish came was again a reproduction of proposal in which Lalan Saran acted and uh, my friend, uh, what's his name? Mohan Dali acted and third person whose name I can't recall at the moment. I think it was Devendra Chopra. Huh? Anyway, 
So Girish had congratulated me. Now that translation had been approved by Shinoy saying that uh, and he could react to the small town um, conversation which I had uh, borrowed a lot from my uh, very aging uncle who always added a sentence when he was, spoke something he would always say Jo hai so kya kehne hai so this is the phrase and, but Chinoy had seen my 3-1 act plays and uh, so when I gave him this script of Kamyu to read or I read it out to him because I don't know how Shinoy found so much time to listen to other people's things. He sort of uh, made his critical comments on this and he said something which is very significant. He said, uh, Dube, don't do this play. You have a uh, natural tendency for farce. Try to do something serious. So this he said, why don't you try this very play? It will not work with the audiences, but it is a Kamu play and we make these minor corrections and try a serious play. Now it is very, I will have to jump. Chinoy having said it and Chinoy was practically God for me and since it was a Kamu play and at that time one was reading a lot of existential uh, existentialist uh, literature, so one knew about Kamyu, one knew about Sartre, and one knew about Siman Dupuar, whose novel one had read. So one had a fair idea of these people. So I did this, and sort of uh, Al Kazi, who was very good at the sets and all this sort of a thing, and as I said, he saw a rehearsal and. Uh, there is a story behind that which I will tell later, but he corrected the steps which made my entry very effective. But knowing that Al Qazi was be very critical about sets, I designed the set myself, and we had this man who was uh, using our go down, and on the very broad and you might say conical. Uh, stage I built the sets with this and it turned out to be I used a lot of ropes which I kept on using all my life but the ropes worked very well even Al Qazi commented on it in fact Al Qazi saw the production and finally I sent him the script at the NST where he reproduced the play Anyway, coming back to uh, this play, Kamyu's, which I called Sapne at that moment. When I revived it at the Prithvi, I called it Ajnabi. But there I called it Sapne. And the actress which I had is, her name is um, Musa Bhai. I'll get her first name right. And Iqbal. Iqbal is a male name, but it's also a female name, who was with us in St. Javier's, very uh, attractive woman, and by this time she was married and slightly, mm -hmm. and she was playing the mother. The lady who was playing the wife of the Ajnabi, or of the person who comes over here and who's ultimately murdered, was played by Kanta Vaswani. And though I was very fond of her, but somehow, that is one of the stages where I realized that for me, and again later on also a similar incident happened, for me the acting and the actress was more important than the fact that I was attached. So I was very attached to Kanta Vaswani. We didn't actually date in a very big way, but we would keep meeting and sort of, a, we were attached, let us say. But the point is, ultimately, uh, she acted in the play, but she, did, she didn't do a good job. And all the criticism was directed towards her. But what is impor important that Amina Musabhai gave a brilliant performance, and so did Iqbal. And 
I played a minor role in it. I enter at the end of the play and say three words or four words. I've forgotten the words. And uh, it's a very negative thought at that moment and it was very effective. Anyway, so this happened at uh, the stage. I think I'm at the Shinoi stage. And uh, the point is, it is very important at this stage that I must add, because I was very good at choreography, thanks to Vijay Anand and to Al Ghazi, I was good at choreography, setting people how people move on the stage. <coughs> and at that time, one was used to the proscenium all the time. So all my choreography was obviously, the, the basis was the proscenium stage. But uh, we'll come to that later. So I found that all my movements were going round and round. I was just not being able to sort of uh, get the choreography right. And at that stage, I realized that there was something basically wrong. And it so happened that I had faced a similar problem in the three one act plays which I had done for Xavier's in Gujarati, if you please, in Gujarati. And there also, in one of the my actors, I had faced this problem. He was not being able to get the movement right. Jagdish Shah is his name. He was moving round and round. Now the same problem when I faced over here and on this stage, it sort of looked very awkward. And it so happened that accidentally at that time, Shambhu Mitra was performing in Bombay at uh, uh, the open air sort of a CCI. Huh? So I went to see the performance because my Gujarati friends with whom I was meeting occasionally, they said, you have to see this. And so I saw uh, Rokta and also Putul Khela. Now, Putul Khela, because one uh, uh, knew Ibsen and one had read Ibsen's play. So when I saw Putul Khela, suddenly one thing hit me beside the first production, which was uh, Shambhu Mitra's uh, uh, Tagore play, I'll get the name, Rakta Kaurabi. Putul Khela, since I had no problem in understanding the play, because I knew the original, I had read it. But what I realized in Putul Khela, that they were not always moving across, they would sit, come close to each other, and there was this marvelous scene, the bed scene as I call it, where the husband and wife are on the bed and they are talking, talking. I gave a tribute to the scene in one of my productions in Delhi, NSD Productions. Now that scene, I suddenly realized that composition doesn't mean moving across the stage all the time. Compositions can go, like in cinema, closer. You see, it is the eye of the audience. What do you want them to see? Now, this is the principle which I had uh, suddenly realized. And when the climax came, they just threw out. There's another thing which I learned from that production, that you don't have to have the full set right from the beginning. So suddenly, at the fag end of the play, Shambhu uh, Mitra and his wife, Tripti, uh, they were sitting right in front of each other and having a discussion scene. Now that is the famous discussion scene and it's sort of, uh, I can still recall it very clearly and therefore I learned the basic principle that choreography, especially choreography done on the uh, regular stage, is different from choreography if it has to be done elsewhere. But this was choreography which was done on a regular stage and I suddenly it dawned on me what was wrong in my, the production of Sapne which I was doing and next day in the rehearsals I changed everything. 
made the actors stand still much more often and the compositions which I'm sure I borrowed from Putul Khela, I got them closer to each other and tightened the talk. I was not afraid of the blah 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 which was in my translation of Kamu's play. Now it worked beautifully and now there is a story attached to this. How did Dharamveer Bharti see this play? Now uh, theatre unit had already done a play called uh, Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godo. Now Waiting for Godo had made uh, some uh, sort of a repels because I remember the Times of India critic writing about it and sort of praising it and whatever it is. So uh, since the news had gone around, Dharamveer Bharti was very f fond of pan. Uh, he went for his uh, pan eating session and then came to the Bhulabhai Institute. Now when he came to the Bhulabhai Institute, there was nobody over there except my friend Abdul Shakur, who is no more. And Abdul Shakur being inquisitive, naturally inquisitive, and these people moved around. So he said, what are you looking for? Can I help you? So they said, no, we have heard about Al Qazi and the theatre unit. So we just came and we wanted to know. So uh, Abdul Shakur was in many ways very inventive. He says, but we, are, we also do Hindi plays. Huh? And he says, why don't you come and see our play? It's on tomorrow. Now surprisingly, the Bharatis had shifted behind the Bulhabai Institute near the Parsi Hospital and they were staying. So it was just walking distance. So they agreed to come. And Sapne was done and they were shocked because there was no front curtain, nothing and all. They saw it and Dharamveer Bharti came backstage, congratulated me and he also said this is the first time I am seeing a play without curtains in front and all this sort of a thing. So and at, by that time I had read Andhayog and there is a story of Andhayog which I will tell later on and so I said please give me the rights of Andhayog. Now I want to do Andhayog. So he says okay if you want to do it take it, the rights are yours. And that's how I got the rights of Andhayu. Meanwhile, it so happened that al Qadi was having problems with Swali Bhatliwala and he had already built another theatre on his terrace, which was on the sixth floor. People had to climb and go there. And he had made all arrangements, even for arrangements for Susu and all that sort of a thing. And People who came to see the plays, they were given soft drinks and all that sort of thing. But before that, the interesting thing is, uh, Al Qazi had already accepted the offer of Sangeet Natak Academy to run the National School of Drama. Now, there is a story behind this. The paper which al had uh, in detail written uh, was surprisingly actually the hard work was done by P.D. Shinoy because I still remember the sentence which was there in that book. Uh, Acting is the rebirth of the human soul. Now I knew about it because when uh, Shinoy was writing this thing. He would occasionally talk to us. But anyway, al Qazi became the director of the National School of Drama and there was a farewell party for him and obviously people were worried what is going to happen to the theatre unit. And al Qazi, in his speech, in his parting speech, eulogized me and praised me. He says, why are people worried about the theatre unit? Satya Dubey has already started uh, a new play and that's where he mentioned Yugo Betty's play which I later on did. So therefore al Qazi gave me a good parting farewell and later on when I, 
when he said, why don't you do Andha Yog? So I said, I want your terrace. Will you allow me to your terrace? And which Al Ghazi gracefully allowed me. And I did Andha Yog on the terrace of Al Ghazi. And that is why some people kept on saying that Al Ghazi did the production. But the first production of Andha Yog was done by me on the terrace of Ibrahim Al Ghazi. Now, because at that moment the flat, his flat was vacant, I was using the flat and sort of a sleeping over there and this that and doing all my recordings which was done by Sushma Kumar and I would leave the door open and then get her to record. There was this uh, tape recorder which theatre unit had which was very simple to operate and Amjad had taught me how to operate it and therefore all the recording of Andhayu because all the singing portions I had eliminated and I put that on record, it was played on the tape recorder. So I have said that this is how Al Ghazi gave me a, a fillip to my career and that's how I did Yugo Betty's Queen and the Rebels which later on I saw Vijaya Mehta's production. Now and where finally I discovered Sulbha Deshpande. So all this is there which has already been said. Something about Andha Yug which is very interesting. We started rehearsals and there was one boy who was an architect and he was one of those loyal chaps who was uh, very sincere and genuine but on the one day before Andhayu when we had our dress rehearsal it had rained and Kadar as he sort of a uh, made his entry since he had missed two or three rehearsals he was over anxious and he slipped and he had a fracture of the ribs and this is where Roshan Al Ghazi helped and Zareen engineer and all they took him to hospital and they sort of were corrected. Now the problem was I was short of one actor. Now being short of one actor of course uh, was a problem. So I had my friend Gohil, uh, who, with whom uh, we had spent a lot of evenings at the coffee shop and the, uh, what you might say, I indeed tried to put a spoke in the wheels because meanwhile VK Sharma had been acting in a play by Auntie called Kadam Mila Ke Chalo. Now, uh, INT tried to make this a big issue, but VK Sharma decided to act in my play. And it so happened that he was supported by Prabodh Joshi. Now another little fact is, one of the persons who saw that production is Dr. Uh, Dr. Ajit Chitre. He was one of the, he still remembers that production. Anyway, coming back to the main issue, after Kadar sort of uh, had this, now I had uh, already somebody else understudying Ashwatthama. Now the point is, who should play Ashwatthama? And um, Meena Chitnis, as we called him, Manuin Bhargadana Rao Chitnis, uh, suddenly uh, got the panicky and he didn't want to do the show. So, finally, I was forced to do the first show of this thing. And this was the first time where Amrish Puri was acting with me. And, and uh, this girl did the uh, first show of Gandhari. And uh, now the interesting thing is, uh, Naren Sheikh, who will come later on in my detailed description of Naren Sheikh, also acted in Andayo and he's the best Yudhishthir one could have had. Meanwhile, our friend Amrish Puri was doing Dhritarast and he had a problem how to play the blind man. I said, keep your eyes open. But 
how to keep one's eyes open throughout the scene, which was about 15 minutes, the first scene, which is a marvelous scene. So the point is, he managed to keep his eyes open for 15 minutes uh, during the entire performance. The set was very simple because I used the facilities of that place to do that. And there was this water tank from which Vidur spoke and from which V.K. Sharma, who was playing the Vritha Yacha, spoke. And so therefore, that was the production which happened. And Gohil had written down his lines on the railings of the tank and he managed to do the performance and after three shows it happened that Meena Chitnis had to go out or something and he asked me to take over again and that's how I took over Ashwatthama and finally that Ashwatthama I think I also did it in Calcutta because by that time again Meena Chitnis was not available. Now, another thing is fortunately nothing went wrong with the tape recorder because there is an entire story about the tape recorder which I will say later on. So this performance with Dr. Bharti was too scared to see but people who saw it were so impressed that they forced him to sort of uh, see the next show and Dharamveer Bharti came for the next show where he saw Meena Chitnis performing as Ashwatthama and he was very impressed and everybody was impressed and sort of uh, that is how Andhayuk started. The two prairies were played by one boy called Ahuja and one person who now plays has played Sai Baba way back who was a Ipta artist but he stuck by me and did that performance and he did it very well. But then we had a second problem. The Ahuja brother said, you know, I cannot do more performances, he had no problems. Then Roshan Alkazi went to his house and sort of uh, said to no, we are professional, you have to do it. And he, uh, the Ahuja brother also did it. And so therefore, Andhayu, the first performances were done. This is how. And in which Roshan Alkazi had designed the costumes Though she didn't take the credit, she gave the credit to Zareen Engineer who was helping her. Zareen Engineer, engineer again a story of her later on, uh, was, is even now a friend of mine. She's in Calcutta and doing plays for children, for dumb and deaf, deaf children. Anyway, so Zareen Engineer took over and the costumes were a success very minimum things were done and the play went down like a bomb and everybody loved it so much so that when Alkazi finally did the production in Delhi and brought the play to Bombay everybody compa compared his production to mine and gave me credit more than I deserved but Alkazi was very upset because his, um, his Andhayu was on a grand scale and uh, he had all these NSD actors and it was on a grand scale. It was done at Birla Matushri Savagra and uh, this is where Vijaya Mehta's first husband, Mr. Khote, after the performance had a heart attack and for some time Vijaya Mehta kept on raving that it was Alkazi's production which uh, Mr. Khote saw and therefore he got the heart attack. Though there was no direct relationship but Vijaya for some time was very upset and actually when you lose your husband you sort of... Uh... Anyway, now this is a point where I have come where I have talked of Andha Yu and what else can one can come correct. Now, the lady who acted in Sapne with me, Iqbal, who was a very fine actress, and in between, there had been a production by Vasi Khan of uh, Pula Deshpande's
play he had called it red ki diwar now in that play by that by the time it ended of course i had given up that play and that story will come later ikbal had lost her voice and despite many attempts somehow i didn't know how that voice could be corrected and therefore i had to eliminate her from the cast of andha yug which was very sad because she was a very fine actress now since we were looking out for another actress i remember that we were walking down and there was this irani shop and a lady was walking past and uh, since i vaguely knew her i asked her whether she is interested in acting her name was nina this is not nina kulkarni and she was quite adventurous so i said will she try to do the part of gandhari she agreed and we rehearsed with her and she did a very good job of gandhari from here i also have to add the two other people who were in the play one is gurnam singh who was a sikh so i used his sikh sikh appearance for kripacharya and there was this other actor who played drishtadyum and drishtadyum and he also did a good job and that is how andhayuk got done now one of the persons who was very act- active in this and who helped us was neera mukherjee who later on became neera benegal now this is important because they are uh, going to be very much a part of my life i met her during a performance of at jehind college of jiradu's play the name of the play i am forgetting but later on it was done by vijaya mehta in which bhakti acted jiradu's play i had already met her after the play we went obviously we went out it was night and shafi an actor now who is in london he sort of uh, was with me and of course he was a totally theater group person and a total sort of uh, you might say chamcha of the theater group now this is very important as we walked down at, uh, at that time in front of eros theater there was a bus stop and we were standing at the bus stop to get uh, waiting for the bus now shafi and i started talking and i was criticizing this play of jaradu done by the theater group and uh, we started talking and one of the things which i remember i said i said shafi ye play main hindi mein karunga ye sare jo angrezi natak people do i will do a better job of that but i will do the plays in hindi now the point is i was very confident at that stage because and though i had done only two one act plays in st xavier's but i was very confident and shafi sort of a chabi lagaud me and said something so i just shafi i tell you i promise you i'll be the best in all this but i will not give up doing plays which have been done in english but hopefully i will translate them and later on i translated no exit i had already translated uh, a play by kamyu about which i have already talked and no exit ultimately became a very very successful production and before i forget i must add that the set the door to which in uh, everybody entered was made by the same mystery who had done work of creating helping me with the rope set of kamyu's cross purpose 
sapne as a, we called it so this is the thing my over confident nature where i had done hardly anything and i claimed that i will be the greatest i don't know whether i became the greatest but i did become a well known director later on we performed in calcutta for the festival which they had which was their first festival and we went there to perform now by that time another actor from ipto for various reasons had left so there i had to substitute again and take another actor i remember his first name ajay and he was a thin person and he was okay person and so uh, we took him along and he was quite agreeable as a person now the point is the set for this play was created by ghisard the person from uh, bula bhai desai huh? and he made a set because i wanted a different set i couldn't create recreate the situation of the alkazis terrace you know so the set was very huge and it had steps coming down uh, to the audience now the only problem was the person who was to execute the set was a, a friend of mine who had done the set of ashar ka ek din also now he also being a sort of a bhakt of mine he took the set literally and the set had been transported earlier and this gujarati friend of mine had reached there and he stuck to the dimensions of the set and that became a problem because then the set was going beyond the curtain beyond the front curtain and finally when i reached there i asked him to get the proportion of the set because he was had done it literally anyway he being a very cooperative person and so he did the needful and we reduced the size of the set and the steps because he took the steps literally as made by gisar so we brought down the measurement and all that sort of a thing and we went to delhi to perform this play now one of the things which i will mention even later on ki i have always been unlucky with technology in the first version this singer mahendra mahendra kapoor of course huh, had sung a song which was composed by jaydev we had a problem of uh, locating mahendra kapoor and getting him to sing the song again anyway that was finally done thanks to narendra shet and so we had got the song done now everything was in place and as usual i was using a recorded voice for the what you might say the chorus eh? but when we reached calcutta and during the rehearsals we had to try out certain things and what is interesting is we do, did not know and perhaps even narendra did not know the currents were different so there's something called acdc which i still don't understand and narendra put on his tape recorder and it sort of a burnt there was a minor explosion and it was burnt and therefore the tape recorder stopped working so in that production we had the problem how to have the choral thing but fortunately because we had script and all these actors ultimately spoke on the mic which was there and the uh, the thing had been burnt but the microphones were working and so we did all the what you might say on the spot 
choral uh, speaking or singing, whatever it was. As I mentioned that we had a performance and Silva Deshpande was doing Gandhari now because Nina was not available for some reason. So Silva Deshpande was doing Gandhari. More about Silva Deshpande later on. But one thing I remember, I was playing Ashutthama because Meena Chitnis was not there. Two things. Uh, while coming to Calcutta, uh, Vijay Anand was remaking Guide and I was offered the same role which I had done in the English Guide. Uh, now there was this again this conflict between theatre and uh, cinema but I remember distinctly this, and very clearly I chose not to do the film but to do the theatre and I have never regretted that and we came to Calcutta. It was very well organized and Pratibha Agrawal came to meet me because she had heard of me and she expected somebody big uh, made and as she was sort of uh, we were getting introduced Mr. Shaman and Jalan came and Pratibha Agrawal in a very very funny way said this is Mr. Dubey of course she spoke in Hindi and Shaman and Jalan looked at me from top to bottom didn't say anything finally we did the show I don't think the first show was very good but it was good enough because Sulbha Deshpande's performance was outstanding and the other boys also and VK Sharma over here who had a slightly uh, awkward position uh, in the earlier production now here he became very very prominent in fact so prominent that Dr. Bharti later on asked me who was that who played the Vridhyachak Huh? because now he had the total stage to himself and he was coming down the steps so he was very very impressive because the stage had been divided into two parts and one part had these steps and one part had some other thing so VK Sharma's performance was outstanding and somebody else was substituting for Vidur because I again had to replace that actor and who was not a very good actor but it is interesting to note that Karant in his review of the Calcutta Andhayug praised only that actor the other actors somehow Karant missed out on talking about them and though that person later on kept on being friendly and he also joined my workshop now Abdul Shakur was here in Calcutta also and doing his little bit of public relations and trying to sort out differences in the caste because with so many people there are bound to be conflicts anyway the whole uh, the, uh, we did two performances Prithviraj Kapoor was there at one of the performances later on Al Qazi was also there and Al Qadi was doing Oedipus, and there were a lot of guests. And all Shambhu Mitra saw that production, but fortunately, he came for the second show, which was much, much better. That was the only time I've seen backstage workers crying because Silva was playing Gandhari, and the way she emoted, I have seen the audience cry. But this was the time when everybody was sort of uh, the backstage pe actors were so affected by what Silva was doing that there was tears in everybody's eyes. After the there was the seminar and all, which I made my famous statement. The Hindi theatre wallas were always concerned with the Hindi theatre. And I had done Hindi plays, Ashadka Ekdin and the others. And my contention was 
you don't have to do theatre. And if you have to do theatre, do it only when you feel the itch. And uh, in Hindi, I use the word "khujli hai to ap natak kijiye." Otherwise, you don't have to do theatre. Now that became a very, very famous remark, and a lot of comments were made on it. I met Adi Rangachar, who was part of that seminar, and the basic theme was: we need a small theatre, and where the professionals would find it uneconomical, but the new group, amateur groups would find it economical. I do remember finally Shamanan calling after these people performed and all and that was uh, 31st. Now these two, three boys, I forced them to see a play done in the old style. I am forgetting the name of the gentleman who is no more now but who did the old style theatre and I said you people see it whether you like it or not don't worry I of course didn't see it and they went and saw it and there the Sita was very big and but these boys were crying because this is the magic of theatre that once you accept and surrender yourself to what it is and if the performance is good you end up by Sarvati. That was one of the lovely moments of the Calcutta festival and uh, part of the story of Andhayug. Now, one of the things which also I remember because uh, our friend Shaman Jalan, who is no more, was instinctively a businessman and a PR man and a very good director himself. And but he, sort of a, what you might say, he was octopus-like reach he had. I mean, everybody ultimately ended up in being in love with Shaman and Jalan. And so, but we didn't know him. So he invited me to, to first to his house and I met his family. Huh? He talked novel or, or rather a book called Six Lessons first six lessons in acting and it was very sweet of him he gave me a copy of that and directly or indirectly a lot of my teaching has been based on that because Belovsky that I think is his name was uh, in the tradition of Stanislavski so therefore he was not trying to be better than Stanislavski but his writing was so beautiful and the way he wrote the thing, I think it influenced me very deeply and when I wrote much later the play called It Could Only Happen in London, a lot of inspiration was from that book. I would like to mention Jaswanti Tehliani again whose house also I've had a lot of lunches and this sort of a thing, who was always egging me on to sort of a, and introducing me to potential advertisers. And one of the income tax officers, which he knew, uh, who ultimately got me quite a few ads for my production and this. But talking of ads, what I remember gratefully is the ad given to me by Jason Dukuna and that was the first ad. Anyway, after every production we used to have a party and there was this lovely girl called Miss Lobo. Her mother was a, a part of Natya Sang or whatever it is and she was running this institute and in which she finally asked Alkazi to do something about it which Alkazi did. Now it's very interesting how that thing happened. Alkazi uh, took me to a restaurant and gave me tea and sort of convinced me that I should start teaching 
and that was the time where I started teaching at the Nati Sun. Now at that time, 25 rupees a session was a hell of a lot of money for me. And that anyway, Al Qazi convinced me, and I started teaching over there. Of course, Al Qazi would not be present for all the sessions, but Al Qazi's touch was that when he gave you authority, he gave you full authority. And I remember enjoying my Nati Sang uh, teaching and where perhaps <coughs> thanks to Alkazi's influence I learned how to shout at actors and all. And incidentally that uh, is the place where I met Amrish Puri and a lot of other people. And I did a production of Bichu which had already been done at the, th at the theatre unit by al and which I had seen. So we did Bichu, in which Amrish Puri did the main role. And But what was interesting, the, b besides the surrender of authority which al when he introduced me, gave it to me and I did it. And I think I did a very honest job and I earned a little bit of money, which was quite a lot of money at that period of time. But I now, since I've talked of Miss Lobo, who was an act, I did a play called Shutur Murg, in which I convinced this beautiful woman to act. And of course, her point was that I, she doesn't know Hindi. I said, don't worry about that. And she acted in that uh, play and one of the, I think Silva's sisters also participated as the maid servant, whatever it was. In that, we used the song, Tum Jiyo Hazaro Sal, and my fondness for using film songs was evident. But we had a party, and surprisingly, we had the party at Jaswanti's house. And at that party, uh, Vinod Doshi and Saryu Doshi were there, and also, uh, because I was working for Zul Vilani at that time, uh, 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 Pataudi and his uh, later on his uh, wife Sharmila Tagore were also present. It was a lovely party where Miss Lobo sang and everybody, sometimes parties go very well. It was a marvellous party. And at one stage, uh, Vinod Doshi, who had seen Shutur Murk, thanks to Arvind Deshpande, uh, he asked me, because Jaswanti was all the time pushing me towards Vinod Doshi, he said, what can I do for you? It is interesting that Saryu Doshi had already seen the play Yayati, which had been done earlier by this time. And uh, so when Vinod Doshi asked me, and I, I, told, I have already spoken about the fact that I remembered him remember the fact that he had met me at, the, at another party and then when it came to this play Shutur Murk, which he was quite bowled over and uh, he asked me okay, what he could do for me. I said, give me rehearsal space, that's what I really need because I think by that time this Nati Sang thing was getting over or some such thing. So uh, we know initially instinctively because he was always over generous offered me his own flat but since uh, i did not want to intrude into somebody's house so i said no this is people will find it difficult to come to this place and also find it awkward to enact in such a lovely place so then he offered me walchen terrace Valchan Terrace was being at that time vacant. So he offered me and we got the keys and all this. And of course we were supposed to put the lights on, off and uh, the fans off, which we never did. But one of the things of Valchan Terrace was, uh, which was initially also supposed to be used by Rangayan and by, um, not by Rangayan, by Avishkar, which had just started and uh, it had been given jointly to Arvind Deshpande and me. Anyway, 
the point is ki that was the time where i remember writing a letter to girish and saying that he must give arvind deshpande the right to do tughlaq which arvind deshpande did with the famous actor uh, a commercial actor but who was a very good actor also and the set was designed by uh, damu kenkre you huh? know and slowly arvind deshpande the actors found it difficult to come up to this place tardeo so therefore he didn't use this place much and i had the full sort of freedom to use the place and as i said we also misused it but the most unique thing which other people will also mention is the number of people we got to visit actually most writers uh, like uh, mohan rakesh badal da and one or two more people for them it was like a dharmshala they would come and stay there and have a drink and we would be talking late into night since we were not disturbing any neighbors this place was like open house all the actors would clean the floor and that was the important part of the ritual and there were two or three interior rooms where i used to i sort of uh, finally picked up on the thing uh, directing from a distance that means i would be lazy not come to the rehearsal but my ear was very sharp and therefore i could still shout at them if they made a mistake and i went there because i used to know the place very well the other very very uh, important part of the thing is we were having readings of hey vadan by that time girish had written the play and given it to us read and we were reading the play for about 6 7 months so therefore uh, this is very important one day tendulkar came and it mana le ke ka karto tu matlab tu natak he said show me something and instinctively i told uh, amol palaka to take a position and without realizing what i am doing i asked amrish puri to start running up and down and before i knew it since all of them knew their lines the first scene of hey vadan was set and eh? and right in the front of vijay tendulkar's eyes the first thing and then of course hey vadan was started rehearsal because that is one of the things my laziness also has contributed to a lot of things and the insistence on speech learn your lines first play will come later on and that is how it happened uh, finally uh, later on girish saw a run through of at walchand terrace of hevadan uh, and i think i have mentioned that story of karant since i did uh, i wanted a hindi translation so as usual girish convinced karant to translated which karant did but karant was at one level a very innocent person he sent the written manuscript to me and it could have got lost in transit or whatever happened but fortunately by that time theater unit was doing well thanks to the doshis and all the so we got it typed and made copies i don't know whether the xeroxing was there but some other way and i remember sending the translation to nemichan jain to rajender nath and to all the people in delhi and though uh, to uh, be fair to delhi they never gave me a copy of any plays which they did because everybody was anxious to be the first to do a particular play because the first production always made news but that is the time when we had uh, had a lot of readings and i remember reading kusma grajes or hearing kusma grajes play dr uh, lagu reading it out over there and that was the time when thanks to kumud ben's influence tendulkar had written ghasiram potwal 
uh, no, that was later. He had written uh, Sakharam Binder, and surprisingly, I found certain common things of Sakharam Binder and another play, which was written by a person who was an architect and who could not attend my writer's workshop, which I held in '73. But that's another story. But I could see the shades of uh, uh, Sakharam in that person. And one of the other plays which Tindulkar read out was uh, Ashi Pakarieti. I fell in love with that play. But as usual, Tindulkar had only one copy and finally, he, like all writers, he didn't lose the copy. Now I have to come back to the Doshis again. Now having given this place, uh, Saryu Doshi and Vinod Doshi would invite a lot of people to see the plays. And I think the first play they invited was Kumud Mehta and Arvind Mehta to come and see the play. After that, so therefore I was obviously introduced by Saryu Doshi to Kumud Ben, who was, um, she, Saryu Doshi kept on saying that she was a stunner as a young person. But uh, I came to know that she had joined the Communist Party, as Arvind Bhai had also done. They had done a lot of work you know, for a lot of people. They finally helped to write the form, the application for the Homi Bhava Fellowship, and which finally, thanks to their pressure, I submitted. And finally, I got the Homi Bhava Fellowship. And uh, of course, I postponed it by a year because once I knew it was guaranteed that I was getting it, I didn't want to sort of uh, hurry up the thing. And uh, my subject was interaction between cinema, between uh, cinema and theatre, which I did. Though our friend Narayana Menon, who later on became a very good friend, had his. Uh, Point. He felt that it was not a good job which I had done because at that time you had to write a report of what you had done. By that time, Pumit Ben was already working for NCPA for this thing. But what I remember of Kumar Ben is also her son who would be there who was a very good table tennis player. In fact, he had uh, reached quite a this thing. And that was the time when Girish, myself, Tendulkar, and everybody would instinctively, if one was not going to the Doshi's house for a drink or for a party, initially we would end up by being at Kumud Ben's place because, in spite of her reservations, Kumud Ben and Arun Bhai would also join the party. And of course, Prafulla the Hanukkah was everywhere. She had a house right opposite. And uh, I must mention this little fact that in one of the um, uh, occasions, Prafulla gave a small party. And uh, Tendulkar's famous play, Shantata Kod Salu Ahe, uh, uh, I had talked to Sulba Deshpande on the phone and she had told me the gist of the play. So when we reached, uh, this place, uh, Prafula's place. And one of the things which I asked Tendulkar, had, had he read Naked of Pirandalo? Because I found a lot of similarity over there and Tendulkar said he had never read that play. So fair enough, that was the end of it. And of course after eats and all this sort of a thing. But the interesting thing about Shantata is, uh, everybody forgot about Naked, but there was a play which Duran Mart had written, uh, which had a trial thing. So everybody believed that Tendulkar had taken the play from there. Though Tendulkar, actually there was a custom in Marathi and even in England where people, uh, there were, what you might say, false trials and people became, and so Tendulkar remembered that and plus Marathi may bhi bo hota tha. 
so tendulkar created a play out of that now i uh, it is interesting that only kanti madhya had read the duran mart original play which i had read uh, also read but the int when they wanted to produce the play they kept on insisting that it is based on that though i later on even read the play of duran mart and the novel because i used to read a lot at that time so i had read the novel and that's why i had discovered duran mart so this is the thing the myth but the int kept on insisting and that is why finally when pravin joshi did the play the end was difficult the end was unlike duran mart you see he had to get the heroine because he th- thought it was shantata commit suicide and that was sarita jo- doshi joshi whatever it is them so this is the sort of a little things and and i kept on insisting uh, and finally they gave the royalty to tendulkar and this sort of a thing and sort of a, but they kept on i think they still believe the damu javeri is no more but i think they still some of them believe that it was taken from duran mart which it was not kanti madhya was the only person who supported me and who had read the original story and read later on he got a copy of duran mart's play and he gave it to me and i read that also so therefore it was sort of a profulla's house uh, opposite and one was staying and going and coming to uh, kumud ben's house all the time and i came to know a few interesting stories which kumud ben would tell when is how much dina patak suffered because dina patak had been i think been married to some uh, some mr sangvi or something earlier who was a lawyer but who was also a communist but the point is the early stages of uh, uh, communism when it was just a cpi there were a lot of uh, things it was a very very uh, vigorous organization and sort of uh, it really made people suffer and according to kumud ben one of the major sufferers was uh, dina patak parted because she got married later on to somebody else anyway so this was the story and uh, i have mentioned sanjay was the name of this young very handsome boy but to conclude the story kumud ben developed what you might say uh, uh, cancer of the brain for which she was operated and she had to wear a wig and she was very upset and uh, arvind but sanjay's story should also be told sanjay was one day coming home and in, in a scooter he had a scooter and he stopped at the lights and the lights wouldn't come and he was just sitting over there waiting for the lights and he had a heart attack it was not an accident he had a heart attack and that ultimately was the end of arvind bhai who by that time had provided for sanjay he they had sold this lovely house and arvind bhai had invested and i think uh, that is still taking care of uh, uh, the widow of sanjay's sanjay anyway so the point is coming and going and sort of a discussing and ganeshpur natkarni also would drop in early morning to have a cup of tea and uh, the bai also knew us and so she wouldn't ask us she would just give the tea there was no problem but itni informality you know and kumud ben of course was very fond of amol palekar and she thought that come uh, instinctively going for the youngster she thought that amol parikal will bring the revolution and there was a playwright which she kept on mentioning and she kept on saying when amol starts a lot of people crowd to see this play and all which i don't know whether it happened or not but she was fond of and so her instinct was to look at the future and which is what is very important and uh, more about amol later on his 
association with the Bhula Bhai, uh, with the Valchan Terrace.